Thank you all for being here. I'm Dr. Leslie Alvarez, a former member of the Student Scholar Days Committee and one of the two faculty advisors to this project. The psychology department, like a lot of departments on campus, has gotten very adept at doing a lot with a little, and we're always on the lookout for creative and innovative ways to get our students involved in research, and we are so thrilled to be part of a national movement in our science, which is the Reproducibility Project, and these ladies are gonna share with you the project that they did um, in accompaniment with this large-scale national effort. And one resource in the psychology department where we feel very wealthy indeed is the outstanding students that we have to work with and that are very eager to engage in this research. And I'll let Dr. Pipitone introduce them to you real quickly. Well, it's my pleasure to present uh, this section's speakers here, Megan Tapia, Kelly Lanzuni, and Tyler Martinez. Uh, Megan and Tyler are psychology majors, and Kelly Lynn is a psychology and anthropology major. Um, all three presenters will be graduating this year, um, and uh, they'll al also be presenting um, this data to the Rocky Mountain Psychology uh, Psychological Association next month in Salt Lake City, Utah. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks for attending our presentation. We have been conducting this research since last fall, and I hope you guys all enjoy. So what we want to focus on today is <laughs> wait just a second. Okay, so what we want to focus on today <laughs> is the reproducibility in science and the different forms it takes. So confirmation versus innovation. And confirmation is just the direct replication of original study, while um, whereas innovation is the introduction of new ideas to um, a replication study. So we see that we have two numbers for confirmation. 25% is actually the replication rate for cancer, um, breast cancer research, so it's very low. And as a similar study has found that there's only an 11% replication rate in science. So instead of confirming original results, researchers are innovating um, replications without knowing the validity of the original method. So psychology as a science is taking a leading role in um, confirming results and protecting science's main asset is um, confidence in its uh, methodology and findings. So here we have a snapshot of the uh, reproducibility project online and all of its contributors. You can see that we're right here. And it's also open to the public. So our part uh, participation in this project is that, um, oh, sorry. Oops, wrong one. Okay, the project itself is an open um, science framework with 59 institutions replicating studies from three 2008 psychology journals. So it's an open, large-scale, collaborative effort, and um, online viewers can view the following. It's available articles, progress snapshots, coding, embedding, and results, which um, are updated periodically. So the project, um, our participation in this project is to replicate the third experiment in the article Detecting the Snake in the Grass, where we ask um, adults and children to find snakes among caterpillars and vice versa. So what's really unique about our project is that we're able to get in contact with the original authors. They um, encouraged our replication and they also provided, um, provided experiment materials via the um, stimuli pictures. So a very key focus of experiment three was the evidence that young children <coughs> detect threat relevance targets more quickly than um, threat irrelevant ones. And even with uh, the visual similarities um, in the stimuli, we have the snake and caterpillar. And here is the statistic from the original study supporting that claim. So the, wait, thus, <laughs> thus um, evolutionary psychology would tell us that homo sapiens um, have a evolution, evolutionary predisposition and selective sensitivity to fear relevant stimuli. So our methods were the same as the original study. We collected participants from two different daycares, the gingerbread that is on campus and also we care. And we had 34 total participants, 17 were children ages 3 to 4 years old, and 17 were their parents. Now the two conditions, the snake condition is where the participant has to find the snake amongst the caterpillars, and we had 16 people in that group. 
And the second condition is finding the caterpillar amongst the snake. And we had 18 participants in that group. So I just want you guys to take a look really quick and see if you guys can find the snake or the caterpillar. This is the trials we gave um, to the participants. There were 24 total. And um, they were assigned to these certain groups. <coughs> So this is uh, Tyler and Kelly Lynn, and they're with a participant right now. And what we did is we used an iPad touch monitor, and they were asked to find the picture amongst um, the sign stimuli in the picture. And they were asked, I don't know if you guys can see it, the purple mat. They were asked to place their hands on the purple mat, and they were asked to find the stimuli that they were assigned to as quickly as possible. And what we were measuring was reaction time. So the reaction time begins when the experimenter touches the smiley face. So in between each matrices of pictures, a smiley face was shown. And what we would do as researchers is we would touch the smiley face and the participant would find the picture as quickly as possible. And then this would be recorded into an Excel file and it would show their overall times as they progress through trials. So this slide shows our general results for this study specifically, just so you guys get an understanding of um, what we found. So on the left, we have the main effective condition, which specifically shows that those who were in the group that were looking for snakes amongst caterpillars found the snakes a lot quicker than those who were in the group who were looking for caterpillars amongst snakes, although in our study it wasn't significant. Um, and on the right, you'll see the main effect of age. It specifically shows that adults find, um, have a reaction time on anything significantly faster than children. So that's not a surprising thing. Children are slower, children are less primed for these things. Um, in our study, it was significant, and it was also significant in the original study. Both of these findings are important for you guys to know about and for us to tell you about because they are trending in the same direction as the original study. And this whole study was for replication, and we're replicating it, so <laughs> it's a good thing. More, important, <coughs> more importantly, though, we found in our study that the main effect of condition with children was also trending towards significance. This means that children who are looking for snakes amongst caterpillars um, found them much more quickly than caterpillars amongst snakes. Um, this was the most important aspect of uh, project three in the entire study. Um, it shows that children are pre-primed for these evolutionary um, fear-relevant stimuli. Basically, we're afraid of snakes because they can kill us, not so afraid of caterpillars because they can't. Okay, these two graphs show, um, basically it compares our study to the original study. And it kind of just shows you that they look very, very similar in that Adults have much faster reaction times than children, and that both adults and children who were in the snake category, they were looking for snakes amongst caterpillars, found them faster than caterpillars amongst snakes. So um, it's really important and really awesome that they pretty much match up because we're replicating it in replication. So in conclusion, what we found is that everything is trending in a similar direction, which is very important because that's what we were hoping to find. Um, we did have some limitations though. So with our sample size, it's really small if you notice, only 34. Um, but it's important to note that any study that has to do with children have really small sample sizes because it's really hard to get child participants. You have to have their parents' permission as well as their permission. Um, we did have some kids who decided not to participate even though their parents said it was okay. So that's kind of frustrating. But on top of that, our study was even more difficult because we had to have their parents involved as well. And the children were actually the easy part because we were able to just go to them. And while they were at recess, we had them play our little game and it was no big deal. But then we had to schedule our entire uh, study around the parents' schedule, which can be crazy. You know, you have multiple kids, you have to pick up kids, you have like a lot of other stuff to do other than help this college out with their random studies. So <laughs> that was really difficult. Um, the SLV, uh, well, the Valley, is really small as well. So that meant that we actually didn't have as many three-year-olds at our disposal. So we did have to open up 
our uh, study to three and four year olds, which the original study didn't do. However, our results are trending in the same direction. So it didn't really affect anything and we still found what we were hoping for. Um, we did have some limitations with our technology. In the original study, they had a big fat computer monitor that sole purpose was just this study and reaction times. However, in this day and age, we decided to use an iPad because it seemed so much easier. And that meant that our wonderful computer science department actually built a program for us, specifically for reaction time and an iPad, but it was in a web browser. So that meant that we relied on Wi-Fi connectivity, which can fail you at times, unfortunately. And if you have a slow connection, it also can you know, not uh, record our reaction times properly, which we did have to eliminate some participants because of that. And also, the fact that it was in a web browser like Firefox, um, sometimes the children would accidentally hit the snake and then scroll, which actually caused it to not record the reaction time. And that kind of messed up our um, samples as well. But we persevered, I would like to say. Some future directions, aside from having a larger sample size, which is always really desirable, uh, one of our professors brought up the fact that maybe snakes are really the more important thing. I mean, we all understand that snakes were the more important of the two in this study, but the point was that he brought up, is it that people who are looking for caterpillars and like snakes are actually finding them slower because they're not scared of this? the caterpillars, or is it because there are like eight pictures of snakes that are overwhelming them with fear, that all you can see are these really scary things and then you just get overwhelmed and then you just hit a button kind of thing. So it would be interesting to go in that direction. But the overall importance of this entire study was to emphasize the importance of replication. Um, we actually found in trending the same direction as the original study, <laughs> which um, is really important because a lot of people, as Kelly said, um, go towards innovation, which means they are trying to find new studies, find new results, and get their names out there. But it's really important that if you're innovating, that <coughs> the study you originate from has really solid groundings. And in order to have those solid groundings, you need to have studies like us to repl replicate the findings and give your future studies more val validity and reliability. <laughs> We have some acknowledgments. Uh, like I said, we have the programming team, which are our computer science department, the original author, who was really cool and helped us and gave us all the pictures, as well as our daycare administration people, who were really, really helpful <coughs> and let us just barge in whenever we wanted to. Any questions? Sample size in the original study? They had a full 40, I think. It was really small. So you guys were close, though. Oh, yes. We had three quarters of the size. Oh. Yeah. And we're still collecting data. We're still collecting, and we're hoping to find, mm -hmm. have at least as much and have significance by the time we present by the end of the month. And our study is going to be published as well. Did you have errors? Did you have to code, uh, code for errors? We generally <laughs> just got rid of any kind of errors. So if they push the wrong, yeah. they push the snake mm -hmm. for a caterpillar, you just yeah. do that trial? the same exact pictures uh, as they were? They were, yes. They gave us the exact same pictures and we incorporated them into our iPad. And, and would you consider changing the contrast to the pictures it seemed like? And this is just the thought, is that the one with the caterpillars is actually a darker picture and has a visual hole. It's a little bit harder to find. Does, it, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was brighter for the snakes is what you meant? Yeah. Um, it just as a visual gestalt that it was easier to, to, to identify and single out the snake. It could have been that the contrast was more, or maybe it's just, you know, snakes are much brighter and they have that brightness to alert us to their poison and everything. And that could, I mean, I'm not going to say that it wasn't the contrast, but it could have just been your innate, like, that snake's brighter than all the caterpillars. So it could also be that. <laughs> and that's just one stimuli, right? You had, what, 24 sets? Yes, yes. we did. For RMPA, you might drop the P-Rep. It's been 
sort of discredited. Got it. Uh, you got enough about that? <laughs> yes, sir. Do they ever try to create some type of model where there's like actual snakes and actual caterpillars and see if like there's a difference in reaction? I mean, not putting like a kid in a pen. With, like, <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly what I was thinking. Putting them in a box. Just kind of, kind of seeing like, will they identify a real snake faster than a picture of a snake or a real caterpillar? Uh, they didn't do that in this study. They did pictures. Um, they did some random pictures, like flowers and stuff. Um, but I know that that's something that they've uh, done before previously, and it's something that they do a lot with. Um, what is it called? The stimuli. When you're afraid of snakes, they'll they'll slowly bring snakes to you. And that's something that they've exposure therapy. Yeah. So it's it's something that they've incorporated in research during exposure therapy. Thank you, Dr. Pipton. Yes. You said that the explanation of the children finding the snakes faster would be the innate evolutionary you know, setting that we have to be afraid of something that could right. kill us. Um, could it all be explained by uh, the children being taught by their parents from a very young age? I, I think of my wife who's afraid of snakes. My kids, even my three-year-old, know mommy's afraid of snakes, let's chase her with a toy one. Right. <laughs> we we did take that in our demographic information. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that we found pertinent to bring to our um, presentation, however. Um, but it's definitely something that we actually did look at. But because the results are so vast across pretty much all the children, whether they've had experiences themselves or if their parents are afraid of them, um, it's trending in the same direction that snakes are more scary. You said you had some trouble finding uh, three-year-olds to replicate the study. How do you plan on um, enlarging your uh, group? In a perfect world, we would be able to, you know, branch out to every daycare here. We'd be able to branch out to Colorado Springs and Pueblo. Um, but, you know, we're out of state. We just became a university. We're just getting our feelers out there. Um, so in the future, it's really cool to be able to spread out to farther places, but right now, we had we had previous relationships with Jim Red on campus, and we care as well. So that's why we picked those, and they really didn't have a lot of three-year-olds, <laughs> unfortunately. Yes? What kind of input did the original authors have on the study? Well, they wanted us to um, actually do it, like replicate a different study, so, but we had to stand our ground and like uh, replicate the third experiment. They had a lot of input, and um, yeah, so pretty much they were trying to persuade us. We didn't <laughs> have to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> but they gave us the pictures, so that was nice to. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs>